This content is sponsored by HBC Solar PV Tech and Automaton Electronics and Security. Welcome once again to this penultimate show, show number 23 of Living Off the Grid in the City of a scheduled 24 show series. I uh, thank you all of you for listening, for dropping comments, pluses and thumbs ups and for considering this very difficult and challenging but yet exciting and uplifting way of life and things to do, which is to live off the grid within a city, but not limited to a city. These techniques, methodologies, mindsets, equipment, technologies can be applied to almost any circumstance and location out in the suburbs, in the boondocks, in the desert and the tundra and on the road, on the road that i will be dedicating this show to the very challenging and bold move and at the same time freeing life-changing move of living off the grid out on the road out on the road on the move mobile this show will cover this very extensive topic and will attempt to do so in about 30 minutes however there is a lot of information to cover a lot of it will be only introductory and we'll leave the details and the intricacies to you for your further research, for your further development. But I will be hovering over and skimming over many of the broad, wide, and expansive topics. And that includes, that envelops, Living Off The Grid, Mobile, the Mobile Edition. The Mobile Edition. And with that, let's begin. Living off the grid, out on the road. It is a whole new, different animal. Even though it does take more or less the same technologies, challenges, mindsets, and determination as living off the grid in a city, in a dwelling on land, it is also very different. And it can bring and will bring a whole different set of challenges, many of which can be tackled with much of the knowledge that you've been exposed to in the last few shows, the last many shows. And let's start with a quick definition of what mobile living off the grid means. Mobile LOTG or living off the grid is nothing but taking your knowledge, your way of life of being disconnected, being unplugged from the conventional grid system out on the road, being mobile in a vehicle, but not necessarily in a vehicle. This could be on a bicycle, tricycle, homemade, non-motored vehicle. It can also be homemade motor vehicle. Could be just a buggy. Could be just your feet, at least one. And your backpack. It could just be as simple as that. You yourself and your backpack. This includes anyone with disabilities. Living off the grid on the road has many advantages and challenges as well. Many of which will be discussed here in this show. So being satisfied with the definition, living off the grid and maintaining mobility while doing so, and not keeping or maintaining a place, at least a full time place of living, dwelling, building, however meager, small or large and fancy. Living off the grid mobile does not include such building or dwelling or structure, which is permanent. Even though you may have such place, you can still choose to stay mobile and still live off the grid. As I mentioned before, you will not be entirely off the grid if you consider the grid, the many services, utilities, and facilities being offered by outside sources, whether it be other people, organizations, companies, corporations, governments, even nature. You cannot be 100% disconnected. You will eventually need some outside assistance. 100% disconnected from every single grid means basically going on a starvation strike and within less than a week or a week you will perish and of course we don't want that we want to live and thrive however i recommend and advocate in this show living as independently and self-sustainably as possible and this in turn will make you a better person more whole person much more powerful much more capable no matter what shortcomings or limitations you may have or any kind of handicap you may have you will be a more powerful person with knowledge technology with know-how methodology and the courage to take on 
such challenging and tough challenge as it is to get off the grid. With the definition aside, let's move on to the types of vehicles that I recommend or encourage to have. And these are the vehicles that will help you stay mobile in today's society, modern, fast-paced society, and to remain part of that society. Again, you can choose anything you want as far as vehicles is concerned. There is no one vehicle that is the only vehicle recommended or that could be used to live off the grid on the road. Most preferably, you want a larger vehicle and a fuel efficient vehicle, preferably electric or that runs on alternative or biofuels or renewable fuels such as hydrogen, again electric, some of the biofuel vehicles like ethanol or biodiesel. That is of course if you can afford these large and many times expensive and resource requiring vehicles. Again space matters a lot especially when you go on the road. You want to have as much space as you can possibly afford. You don't want to go excessive and get yourself one of those bus sized RVs. If that's what you really want and prefer by all means go ahead as long as you're as off the grid as you can and as efficient as you can be. Who knows, there may be a biofuel full-size, bus-sized RV out there that I'm not aware of. But you can remain reasonable with the size and still be comfortable, capable, and mobile while living off the grid on the road. You can have a mid-size van, even a full-size van, and live off the grid comfortably even with company, whether it's friendship or family. And, of course... The person you may live with should be preferably 100% with you on this very bold move of living off the grid on the road, especially if you remain within a city. There are a set of challenges there that need to be taken into consideration. Vehicles, there are many, many kinds, many makes and models. Do your research. I'm not going to go into the details of the perhaps hundreds of makes and models that people like out there that are popular. There are many RVs, recreational vehicles, which are basically living areas incorporated in a large vehicle. They look like vans, big vans, with the driving cabin up front and the living area in the rear, taking up about two-thirds of the vehicle. These vehicles are expensive for the most part. If you get one in good running condition, which will last you a long time and have very limited maintenance requirements, but you can also find, get lucky and find older, good running vehicles of this kind. They are hard to come by, but they do exist and are out there. They have older vehicles that are recreational that you can use for this purpose of living off the grid on the road. And again, I'll leave everyone to go ahead and research the different makes and models. But the prices range from a few thousand too close to $100,000 or even more for the larger, more fancy types. So do consider the cost. Talking about that, we'll jump right into the challenges of taking living off the grid out on the road. You will have to consider the maintenance requirements for that vehicle. And we'll focus on this show at the very least on living off the grid on the road with your conventional motored vehicles. We'll leave the buggy people, the people hauling the bicycles, tricycles, with the little trailers behind them. We'll leave those to another show. Even the people that choose to just backpack or a wheelchair, we'll go ahead and leave those to another show because those bring their own challenges. And I will not have enough time here to cover all of those. So we'll stick with motor vehicle, living off the grid on the road. Maintenance challenges. You will have to more likely than not do a lot of the maintenance yourself if you want to remain as off the grid as possible and be as self-reliant as possible. Expect to change oil fluids, transmission fluid, of course. Your water, your coolant levels need to be maintained. You need to check your steering fluid, power steering for your force steering, and all of the other fluid and air levels, like your tire air levels. Those are good to go. You should be able to change a tire all on your own if you have one of these vehicles. So be prepared and have the correct equipment to perform all of these maintenance tasks and the supplies like spare oil and filters, spark plugs, all that good stuff. Make sure you're familiar with your motor or engine, whatever type it may be, and be prepared, ready, and trained 
and familiar in how to perform basic repairs and maintenance tasks. Another challenge is the mobility. Yes, mobility, even though it is also an advantage to living off the grid out on the road, it is also a challenge and it brings its own set of challenges. Being mobile, you can suffer consequences and challenges with friendships, family, your social life may take a hit, work, it may be difficult to keep a steady job, especially the conventional type of jobs which expect you to have a home and a steady way of life, a normal way of life. You may have a lot of friction with co-workers and employers, not only because you will be a different type of individual, but because there are challenges with living off the grid on the road and they may show up and surface at work. The consequences of those challenges at the very least. So friendships may suffer because you will likely be on the move. Friends expect you to be around. So you may not be able to keep true friends for long. And also the differences between anyone living off the grid, on the road, and just quote unquote normal people. Just the differences, social mindset, the way you think, speak, everything will surface and perhaps cause friction or at least may limit and hurt your friendships. Same with family and any other social relationship you may have with others, other people. Also, weather is a challenge, more so for individuals living out on the road. Weather can be a showstopper for a lot of things. If you live in a vehicle, you may not be able to drive. You may not be able to do many things. You may endanger yourself, depending on where you are located. High winds, hail, snow, extreme heat or cold will affect you much more directly than anyone living in a home. However small or meager that home may be, if you live in a vehicle, you need to deal much more directly with the weather conditions outside. The weather conditions may be just outside of your glass window. It's a lot easier to transfer for that weather. However cold or hot or humid or dry it may be, it is much easier for it to transfer to the inside of your vehicle if it's only separated by a glass window or windshield. Again, a lot of RVs are insulated and do provide a lot more protection and insulation from the weather outside, but even those will need a lot more cooling, heating, and air conditioning than your home. So there's a lot of equipment to maintain, a lot of equipment to purchase, keep up with. Not to mention how energy consuming that equipment is. You may need a full-time availability of energy generators, gas tanks, LP, or even a drop line for electric power, a power cord feeding many of the electric equipment that you may have to deal with the weather again air conditioning heating cooling etc and also water heating and with that expense is another challenge very real challenge and i just mentioned all of the equipment that you're going to need just to deal with the weather and apart from that your food all of the other equipment associated with your rv or other vehicle all of that will be expensive since you're using it full time Cars and even RVs are not really designed to be used on a full-time basis. So if you do, expect to have a lot more maintenance costs and incur a lot more maintenance expenditure on those. Things will be breaking down more often in your vehicle. Air conditioning will need to be worked on more often, refilled. Heating will need to be worked on eventually. Windows will break down, headlights will need work oil will need to be changed a lot more often than most people so expect a lot of expenses dealing with your off-the-grid vehicle expenses I think we've ironed out those pretty good expect to have a lot more expenses if you're out on the road while living off the grid you will have to be for the most part purchasing a lot of the stuff you use food you will have very limited opportunity and resources to cook unless you have somewhat of a kitchen within the vehicle that you have it does take a larger vehicle so if you are in a small vehicle whether it's a manufactured or homemade vehicle you may have some difficulty cooking you may take the cooking outside but you will be dependent very much on weather and conditions outside so expect to however much cooking you plan to do to spend a lot more money on cooked food and ready to eat food and if you live out in the boondocks or in the suburbs country you may be bold enough if able to hunt 
or fish your own food, which of course will require you to cook it. Parking. You will be having a lot of challenges with parking, especially if you live in a city, especially in a larger city. Parking and staying put or spending some time stationary in your vehicle may be a challenge. Some people may not be too welcoming of you spending time in an area, however public that area may be or seemingly public. Very few areas are public. Seemingly many are private, which offer parking space. Parking may also cost money, especially for those bigger vehicles that require power like RV parks and parking areas. You may be charged to spend some time there, so do consider that. Parking may be hard to find in some areas, so expect some challenges finding parking, especially again with larger vehicles in bigger cities. Consider that before you even attempt or think about going off the grid on the road. Just to mention real quick, go back to some of the challenges with social and family. If you go off the grid on the road and, for example, decide to give up your home or not so much give it up, but get rid of it somehow, sell it, rent it. Make sure you think that's through, especially if you have a companion or family. They have to be 100% on board with your plans since they will directly be impacted by your decision to be off the grid on the road. Enough about that. Bathing and cooking. Bathing will require you to have space and the facilities and the resource of running water to bathe. If you're on the road in a vehicle, this may not be an option. You may have to bathe elsewhere in a public facility or someone's bathroom or restroom. So make sure you consider your options with bathing. You may be lucky enough or to be able to acquire a RV big enough to a house a bath or bathing area or just get a like I have done in the past big tub or tub like container and basically take a bucket shower there rag shower did that myself for many weeks in a row and I can tell you it's a challenge I did it during the summer but I can tell you it is even more of a challenge during the winter if the temperature is cool expect to suffer if you have to take a shower depending on the weather conditions exposed and at the mercy of the weather conditions cooking you need the cooking facilities the space and the resources to cook if you need to cook outside you are at the mercy of those the people that own the property outside you will be exposed to other people out there so make sure that you do get as much privacy as possible to cook within a city that is a very real challenge out in the country not so much but still you will be at the mercy of the weather if you cook outside again cooking inside will require you to have running water gas heat warm water at the very least and the equipment associated with those with having those available prime and safety are other challenges that need to be taken into consideration when getting off the grid out on the road within a city even outside of the city crime especially is something to be dealt with very seriously you have to watch local publications and see what the crime rate is in that area you don't really need to for the most part find out through publications to know that an area may be prone to crime high crime just looking at your surroundings the individuals habitating that area running around, walking around, standing around, you can more or less tell to keep yourself safe, not by looks or race, but by demeanor, what kind of conversations they're holding, or what type of individuals they're associating with, what they have in their hands. You can very much tell if you are running risk or not. If you keep an alert and you keep your surroundings on high vigilance, be always aware of your surroundings especially within a city when you're out on the road. You are much more exposed out there when you're out on the road. So please do consider that. Also, in the same token, sleeping out on the road is very risky business, especially depending on the area where you are, since you can no longer be aware of your surroundings while you sleep. Your surroundings may change very suddenly and unexpectedly. 
you may be paid a visit which you very much do not want by criminally minded individuals, individuals with ill intent and even individuals that are mentally disturbed or abused and mentally challenged. So be careful, be aware and at all costs attempt to sleep in areas that you deem safe. Not necessarily away from everyone because those areas may be just as dangerous depending on where since you may be exposed to the locals even on remote areas which may also have ill intent. How do you combat some of the safety concerns as far as crime? A lot of people think and insist that owning a gun, owning a firearm or weapon, sharp weapon or something like that can deter or serve as a defense in the case of criminal attack, a robbery, some kind of stick up, hold up. But do some research in that aspect and I encourage you to find out whether that's a good thing to do or not. I am not completely sure or convinced that owning a weapon and having a weapon on you or by you close by will help in deterring uh, criminal, criminal activity. It may. I am not completely sure. I have not done research substantially on the subject matter. But it is something that you may choose to do, regardless of what studies show, because you may feel more comfortable or confident using that weapon in case it may come handy. But you also have to consider that it may also be used against you. So it is a very fine and difficult choice to make and balance to achieve. So make sure you do consider both weapon ownership and weaponless defense, which are both very real alternatives. Jumping into the health challenges, you have to consider the many health challenges that you will be facing, like exposure to the weather, climate changes, exposure to extreme, in some instances, heat, extreme cold, extreme humidity, extreme dryness. That can lower your body's ability to stay healthy or stay without getting sick or getting a virus or cold or infection. If you use public facilities, you're going to be running a higher risk of contracting transmittable diseases. Some of them may be serious and permanent. Do consider that. You may contract even terminal diseases out there. However remote that chance is, it is still a real chance especially when you use toilets, washing facilities, public bathrooms, restrooms. Do consider the risks involved with that. I would recommend having cleaning materials and disinfecting materials and supplies ready to be used. Another disadvantage of living off the grid out on the road, you will be also more dependent on gas prices, especially if you have a gas operated vehicle to be off the grid on the road. Even if you have a biofuel vehicle or a E85 vehicle that runs on mostly ethanol, you will be having to purchase most likely that fuel and fill up your tank very often, depending how much moving around you do, much more often than most people. So be ready and to be concerned and aware that you will be spending resources and money on fuel a lot more. With that, I will be moving into the advantages, the good news about living off the grid on the road. First and foremost, the feeling of freedom, the actual and real freedom that you will experience is among the top and more sought after advantages of living off the grid on the road. When you're on the road, detached from almost all or most worries and commitments, bondage, of everyday life for most people. That is one of the most genuine, real and authentic feelings that you may have of freedom, independence, power and capability. You are able to do so much more than the average person. You are able to move as you wish and go where you wish for the most part, in very large part at the very least. The second big reason to get off the grid on the road is to be rent free or mortgage free. If you're lucky enough to own that vehicle that you use to get off the grid on the road, you most likely won't have any payment or worries of payment for your living arrangement, which is by far the largest payment for everyone or most people. You will save hundreds if not thousands of dollars every month, every quarter, just by not owning a place, a conventional place to live. 
And with that comes savings. Savings means more money in your bank account. If you are employed or making any kind of money or having an income while living off the grid on the road, which I highly recommend not to stop your income capability or your income potential, if at all possible. Keep making money, keep making resources, keep bringing in goods as much as you can while living off the grid on the road. Again, freedom from work and bondage may be a big advantage or a big plus for anyone living off the grid on the road. You may decide that you don't have enough bills to justify keeping a job, at least a full-time job. So you may decide to go on your own, do business, contract, or just not work at all. That is an option, however difficult it may be. It is definitely an option, especially for those living off the grid on the road. Again, safety is also a advantage. Safety can be a reason for you to get off the grid on the road. You may want to just get away from a certain lifestyle, group, individuals, neighborhood, region, area. You may have reasons to get away from a certain area, again, certain groups or people, and that may enhance your safety. You may have led a life of, you know, activities that you may want to get away from, and living up the grid on the road is certainly a way to do just that, and it may bring benefit as far as the way of life you carry. I'm not going to go into much details about that. So moving on to enjoyment. Enjoyment is among the top reasons for most people to get off the grid within a city. So enjoying life, enjoying what you do, your time with yourself or any other loved one is a huge reason for you to want to get off the grid on the road. Living life at the fullest is a big reason and it's also part of enjoyment. The experience, people may want to just experience places and people outside of their local area. Living off the grid on the road may be a way to do that as efficiently as possible and as bondage and commitment free as possible. You may be able to go very far and to many different cultures, societies, areas, and this will definitely broaden your perspective in life as you will be exposed to many areas, many challenges, many different people, cultures, customs, you name it. This will end up making you a much more complete and whole person. You will be in much more contact with, again, your surroundings, people, cultures, societies, nature, even the city itself. You will be in much more intimate contact with all of this, which may most likely bring you a lot of benefit, a lot of knowledge, a lot of stories, and a lot of satisfaction. Living and enjoying yourself and sharing with others. You can also achieve a feeling of power, capacity, know-how, knowledge, and skill that you never thought possible. Living off the grid on the road is as challenging as it gets. If you do make it, eventually get used to it, it will be very difficult to come back to a conventional lifestyle as you will be much more capable than the average individual, much more knowledgeable, skillful, and determined. So those reasons are huge drivers for anyone to get off the grid on the road. Also, the freedom to move at will is another advantage. You may be a type that likes to move once in a while, maybe not as often as someone constantly on the road, but someone that is that spends a year or two in one area and then move on to the next, perhaps six months to a year in an area, and then move on, look for better places if you're one of those. Living off the grid, on the road, and all of the things that are involved with that may be something that you enjoy and is highly convenient for you. So do consider, if you're one of these types, do consider living off the grid on the road. Of course, do also consider all of the advantages and disadvantages that come with it, as well as the challenges before you leap into such challenging and different lifestyle. The equipment that is recommended, that I recommend personally to anyone attempting to move off the grid, mobile style. Mobile style. I recommend you again have a large RV if possible, if not medium sized RV or van if possible, if not a larger vehicle. Anything less than that you will have to face many of the challenges including the ones I mentioned here plus many more. And the challenges I mentioned here will be multiplied or magnified if you do decide to go with a smaller vehicle for obvious reasons. I recommend that you very much consider solar energy as your primary source of power that is photovoltaic. 
The larger the vehicle, the more area up on your roof that you will have for solar panels, photovoltaic modules. Energy will be one of the most precious and valued resources when living off the grid on the road. So make sure you have a way to harness electric energy through solar energy. That is, if you're living off the grid as much as you can, power from any kind of grid will be very limited. You will need a long power cord, power extension, and a place to plug it in too. So if you're out on the boondocks in the country, there will be no place for you to connect to the grid. So make sure you consider solar energy. There are various types of small solar panels that can be installed on top of RVs and vehicles or that could be deployed without being mounted. could be deployed in different areas outside of your vehicle and fold it, put away when you're not using it. You can also have solar heaters for water and for cooking. You can have, like I've mentioned before, a solar reflector, heat solar light concentrator that you can cook with during the day when it's sunny. You can also use other technologies such as wind with wind turbines. You can use technologies as LP gas stoves, LP gas water heaters, which can be easily purchased and deployed. LP gas probably one of the most used sources of heat for RVs since you can easily store it and take it with you. You can have a 20 pound or 40, 60 pound tank and take it with you if you have a larger recreational vehicle or vehicle. You can also use LP cooling, air heat, water heat and cooking. So LP is very versatile and a technology that is very widely used in the RV and mobile community. You can also have a rain collector. You can build one, buy one, rig one up to collect rainwater and have a water supply with you. Water is, again, another very precious and necessary resource that you're going to have to learn to collect and store for you to use. Of course, you're going to want to drink water often out there. You're going to want to wash with water and use water for cooking and various other things and tasks out there on the road. Shower, of course, you need water for showering, but you also need the equipment and the space and the water heat if it's cool out there you gonna have to have all that to be able to take showers and wash up you will have to learn the art of conserving water and using as little water as possible for you not to be carrying so much water around of course the more water you carry around the more space you will need the more expensive it's going to get and talking about that you may want to also conserve water by not using as much water of your own. You may want to take showers at friends and family homes if they are nearby or public shower facilities as they have in many gas stations, truck stations here in the Americas. If you're in a third world or other country that don't have as many of the trucking stations as here in America, then showering is more of a challenge. And with that, I'm going to close this show. So I will leave it at that. Again, other type of vehicles that may be used to get off the grid do bring their own set of challenges, which I will not discuss here. And I may discuss in another show. Again, this has been the penultimate show, the 23rd show of Living Off the Grid in the City, with the very important topic and interesting topic of Living Off the Grid in the City on the road on the road i hope you have enjoyed the show and if you are the type that are interested in living off the grid in the city on the road please do your research and do explore in much more detail than you have seen here this has been only an introductory crash exposure to some of the very broad areas and topics of living off the grid within a city on the road this has been your host hector vladimir Drop your comments, your likes and subscriptions to the YouTube channel and do look for the next and previous shows from Living After Greed in the City. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please look for the next episode soon and please ensure to share this with your friends and family. And please like this content and subscribe 
as a sign of support and for me to continue to provide this type of content to more people like you. Lastly, if you wish to support this content further, please visit the links provided in this publication. Thank you.